The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, is brought to you by, well, of course, you. If you want to learn more about how you can support the show, go to patreon.com slash expat2020. Hey everybody, welcome to The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 39. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Dan. Dan, how you doing, man? Hello, I'm really, really tired. Um, Tell me about it, man. What's going on? So today, this is Saturday the 22nd of May, and today is the uh, grand re-re-re-reopening of the (laughs) Centre for Computing History. We came pretty close last year to opening, Mm. but we had a flood, so we didn't. Wow. Um, and like two days ago, three days ago, uh, the Center for Computing History was an absolute bomb site. It was destroyed. We'd had people in doing work. We were having our heating upgraded. Uh, wow. There was just junk everywhere. And in like three days, me and two other guys and a couple of volunteers have essentially just resurrected the place from nothing. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a long, long, long couple <laughs> yeah. of days. I bet. Oh, God. But uh, it's all done. And so today we're going to welcome the public back in. It's, uh, hopefully it's going to be good. It's very positive. Awesome. What kind of event do you got going on there today? Uh, not so much. It's just just uh, getting the doors open and getting people in, really. There's cool. uh, a few extra exhibits put out, but we haven't got anything grand planned. Um, uh, a couple of weeks from now in the UK, it's uh, half term. So mm-hmm. the schools are on, on a little holiday. Yeah. And I think we're doing a few more things for that. But for now, we're just getting the doors open and just getting up and running in these new new yeah. COVID measures we have to have. Yeah. Um, Out here in Japan, uh, the junior high schools had their, uh, it's called Taikai in Japanese. It's like a sports day, sports festival. It is. And uh, yeah, they did that last uh, Thursday. Oh, cool. Got that finished. Uh, Everybody was worried about the weather because this whole week in Japan, especially here in uh, Kanto Mm. area, it's been raining the whole week. Hey, same man. Crazy. What's really interesting is usually the the Tsuyu season, which is the rainy season mm. in Japan, usually is in the middle of June, between the middle and late Ju- uh, of June. But yeah. it's starting early this year, actually in the middle of May. <laughs> oh, no. And it's starting to get humid again. So the humidity is uh, yeah. starting to pick up. Yeah, I know you didn't like that when you were out. Oh, here, so. God. <laughs> That's, it's brutal. It's yes. nothing. It just drains you. Yes. 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 That's, yeah, man. I, I yeah. But I actually, I kind of miss it now. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh. <laughs> you don't miss the humidity, man. I know that. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts, though. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Hundred percent humidity. There were a couple of days <laughs> I mean, last week. There was like a hundred percent humidity out here. You just you're just diving from your house to the shop to yeah. wherever you're going. You, you're just diving, as, spending as little time outside as possible. Yeah, because yeah. uh, you just get soaked. Yeah, it's like oh, you, it's you take a shower and like five minutes after getting out of the shower, you're soaked again. You might as well not. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, absolutely crazy. Yeah. But, well, anyway, on yeah. today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Starfield. Uh, you've heard of that game, Dan? Starfield. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the vaporware game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're also going to be talking about GTA Five making another next gen console appearance. Uh, yeah. and then we're also going to be talking about uh, Jeff Keeley and his uh, Summer Fest uh, as well. But first, uh, before we uh, talk about what we have been playing this past week, here is a brief message about where you can find the podcast. Before Dan and Expat discuss what they have been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, will be going up on Patreon at patreon.com slash expat2020 in early access for the first three days after recording. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month and get early access to every episode and listen ad-free along with other perks, including exclusive post-show content after every show, plus special bonus episodes, please visit patreon.com slash expat2020 for further details. On Tuesdays each week, the podcast will be uploaded to all of the free podcast services, 
or you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Expat's YouTube channel, Expat 2020 Gaming. Just download your favorite podcast app, or open Spotify and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like. If that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast, where you can join and chat with the Arena Podcast community, and a website at expat2020.podbean.com, where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at the Arena AMPGNP, as well as on Instagram at the Arena underscore podcast. Now, back to the show. All right, Dan. So uh, hey. this last week, I have been playing the first major expansion DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's called The Wrath of the Druids. Uh, mm-hmm. So the Druids, of course, were kind of like a cultish group. Uh, uh about a thousand years ago in ireland so uh yeah this time avor ventures out to ireland so kind of a a new location um and uh yeah it's it's been boring so far in the sense that yeah Um. i mean there there's uh like several you know provinces and you know kings just like in the in the main game where you have to you know uh solidify certain areas and everything but there are like these trading posts that you're supposed to build up so basically i'm like going from place to place to place and getting supplies and bringing them back to supply posts here and there so it's kind of like uh transport missions at the moment um, right so uh okay uh, hmm. but uh yeah i mean the the scenery is beautiful i mean uh it's a it's a new location um so you know, in that sense, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm 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 enjoying it in that sense. But uh, yeah, uh, the the combat is is similar to the main game as well. So yeah, uh, and oh, I'm yeah. still playing Judgment on PS5. Good. I was going to ask. Yeah, I'm yes. glad to hear that. I am. Uh, I'm getting my way. I think altogether in the game, there's 13 chapters. I think it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm okay. on chapter six now. So I'm yeah. getting farther and farther in the game. So, and it's getting it's getting more and more interesting. So, uh, you know the uh, the plot thickens, so to speak. It does. So, uh, yeah. So twists quite interesting. Twists and turns. Yes, twists and turns. That's for sure. So, how about you? What have you uh, been <coughs> playing this week? More train games? Uh, I, actually, I have. Yeah, <laughs> I um, a, a friend of mine at work uh, recommended. Well, told me about. But yeah, recommended a game called um, Extreme X. Express on the PlayStation Two. Oh, and it's it's a train racing game. Oh, and that you there are uh, uh, six trains on tracks on like intersecting tracks, and you've wow. got to race each other. Huh. Uh, I made a video of it on Twitch and on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, that name, and that was pretty fun. I played that briefly. Yeah. Um, very much of its time. Very much uh, like a budget title, but it's interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. The dynamic of it is quite good. And I've been playing. Um, yeah, I played a bit of DG, DDG, but then should the go. Oh yeah, uh, but mm-hmm. mostly what little time I've had for games this week. I've been playing uh, Yakuza, been a lot, a lot of yeah. Yakuza. Oh, and, which uh, one? Really going still the first, still Kiwami, still one. Okay, Kiwami. Okay. Mm. Um, um, yeah, and just uh, you know, doing lots more with it, doing lots more of the uh, side missions and uh, things like that, and um, yeah, and it's, it's weird how like. This time around, I'm playing. I'm playing it very differently. Like I'm trying to do all the extra stuff because it's it's like the the game puts all this content in there, right? So there's loads of stuff to do, right? And it kind of it kind of wants you to it funnels you to do it to improve your character. Mm-hmm. So like it kind of like pays off to do these extra like side things that you you wouldn't normally think of doing because it does it fundament, fundamentally it does you know offer big rewards for your character. So I'm finding it a lot easier now. Because normally I, I stick mostly to the plot and do what I have to, and yeah. just do the plot. Mm-hmm. But that's actually really hard because then you're essentially you're going in, you're, you're massively underpowered. Because at the end of the day, it is an RPG; it's yeah. an action RPG. Right. So it's in your best interest to go and do the side stuff to level up, to strengthen up, to do the grind essentially. Right. And now, um, yeah, I'm doing all right. No, it's cool. good. I'm, at the, I'm near the end now, and um, yeah. yeah, it's great. Now I have a question for you related to Yakuza and how it uh, 
how it has similarities to judgment. Now, my question is, yeah. does any of the Yakuza game stories tie into judgment later in the game? Because in judgment, I'm finding out that the Tojo clan, yeah. I think it is, they're the yeah. main branch of Yakuza, like in Kamurocho, right? In, in that's right. Yeah, that's, that's a constant. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if any of the characters make any kind of appearances in judgment. Like, does the Tojo clan yeah. actually come down and get involved in the, uh, you know, in the turf war between the the uh, rival Yakuza uh, clans? I really can't remember. Actually, that's a very good point. I'm not, I don't know if the Yakuza... I'm sure they can, the Yakuza do get involved. Hmm. Well, no, yeah, no, they are involved, aren't they? Because, yeah, um, I can't remember. I don't know. Because yeah. I don't know where you are. I'm sorry, I don't want to give you any spoilers, but... Um, your best mate, your your big brawler mate in the game, right, 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 right. Yeah. He because he he got kicked out of being a Yakuza, exactly. didn't he? Because exactly, that yeah. that money went missing. Yeah. Um. Uh, what 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 brand is he from? Well, he's uh, part of the Matsunaga. He was part of the Matsunaga yeah. clan, right? And then he was kicked yeah, out. But it. the problem is, right now in the game, no spoilers here, of course. But I mean, the the Kanre and the Matsunaga clans are fighting each other. It's kind of like a turf right. war going on in yeah. Kamurocho, right? Yeah. But the Tojo, which is the main, main branch, yeah. they are always being referred to in judgment. Yeah. Well, that's because, yeah, I mean, that's because they are the, the dominant family in Kamurocho. And they are, the, well, they're, they're the dominant ones and like all their subsidiaries work for them as well. So right. uh, like the, the Kazuma clan, uh, yeah, the Kazuma clan works with the Tojo clan. Um, um, who else? The Majima clan, yeah. uh, Nishikiyama clan, they all work, uh, Shimano clan, they all work for um, Tojo. Yeah, so, so I'm wondering yeah, no, if any of the, the Tojo clan members it's possible. Make, make an appearance or not, I'm wondering. It'll be interesting I, to see later on, yeah. I mean, I'm sure online there's a, a, an enormous fan-made family tree for the Tojo clan. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Um, uh, and it'll be have all this uh, mapped yeah. out. Yeah. But um, fundamentally, uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so yeah, still uh, hanging in there with Kiwami, eh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 it is good, it is good. I, I'm enjoying it, and like I said, because I'm because I'm putting the hours in and doing all the extra stuff, it's it's actually, um, yeah, I'm it's it's easier. Right, right. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the uh, weekly news beat. So the first uh, news story from this week we want to go over tonight: uh, Starfield. Uh, it is a game. We don't know much about it, uh, other than a few leaked screenshots and so forth. But uh, there's been a lot of a lot of talk this week. Uh, Jeff Grubb, uh, who is a venture beat, he's a an industry insider. He says that this game is exclusive to Xbox and PC. Period. But uh, uh, when it's coming out, we have no idea. So it's mm. like you know what's weird about this story is. You know, a lot of people were saying that it's coming out this year. It's coming out this year. It's going to come out in November. And then now they're, they're saying, all these insiders are saying, no, it's coming out next year. So it's like speculation becomes new story. Uh, that's, yeah. that's the thing I, I, I just don't understand about this. And I mean, Starfield, it's probably going to be a great game. It could be like Mass Effect. Who knows? You know, it's uh, being published by Bethesda. And Bethesda and Microsoft just came out this week and said their E3 conference is going to be a joint conference. You know, mm. it's going to be together, uh, the both of them at the same time. So that's interesting. So we'll probably probably see our first gameplay of Starfield. But mm. I, I don't know, man. What do you think, Dan? I mean, should should they even be talking about this right now? Uh, uh, well, it depends what they have to say. Um, if it's literally going to be another CG uh, BS demo, then probably yeah. not. Yeah. But if they've got actual solid information, like what it's going to be, what it's going to look like, um, when it's going to have a, when it's going to come out, um, yeah, it couldn't hurt. Um, yeah, I mean, if they talk of a year away, next year at some point, that makes sense. We're halfway through this year. Yeah. So. Um, well, that's what yeah. the word is now. The word is they're saying that it's going to be spring of 2022, but. Yeah. Oh, and that makes perfect sense. So now's the time to start, maybe start mentioning it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, that's essentially a year away now then. So yeah. literally a year, spring to spring. 
Yeah, especially since, yeah. you know, uh, Microsoft and Bethesda are going to be doing their conference together now. I think Yeah. I think it's going to come out then. So, yeah. But uh yeah. yeah, I mean, just I don't know, just when we have some definitive information, then make news of it, you know? It's like <laughs> that this well, is the yeah, time I mean, of year. This is the time of year when it's all about spoilers and speculation and all that, right? Yeah. Yeah, all that. It's you know, E three is always a bit a bit tedious for that, especially the run up where things just get crazy. Yeah. Um, and people just start just making stuff up, really right. desperate for you know that that there's uh, attention grabbing headlines. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it makes sense. They want to they want to mention something because so far we have a title. Yeah. That's about it. That's it. And, and the, some leaked, the vague... uh, yeah, leaked well, screenshots, yeah. 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 And this uh, nebulous, you know, uh, it's a space RPG. It's yeah. Skyrim in space. Yeah. 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 So we shall see. Okay, on to the next story. This is a definitive story. <laughs> oh. Grand Theft Auto V. Uh. Again. So it's arriving on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, Series S on November 11th, just in time for the holidays, just in time for all those new gamers that have never played a GTA game before to play it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> money-grubbing rock star. I mean, I, I, it, it's funny. I came out with a tweet earlier this week. I said, GTA 6 on the PS6 in 2026. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's like, why even come out with GTA 6 now? I mean, this is crazy. Well, this I mean, is this it. is like a, like you said before, Dan, this game came out on PS3. Yeah. You know? This game is friggin' ancient. Yeah. It's like, what, people, eight years old now, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, people people shit on Skyrim for being ported out and re-pimped out. About the time this stopped, you know, getting a free pass, because this is, I mean, bloody hell, really? Yeah. I mean, it was pretty good on the PS3. It was friggin' amazing on the PS4. Yeah. Like, it's going to be the same, but slightly shinier. Yeah, that's, that, that's, gonna... what, I was gonna, uh, that's what I was going to say. I mean, how yeah. more it enhanced could this game get? Exactly. You know? <laughs> I mean, the art style and the graphics of it, you, you know, it's not going to be, oh, shit, it's photorealism now. It's, it's still going to look like GTA 5. Uh, yeah. yeah, GTA 5, but just a bit nicer. Yeah. Um, You know? Uh, yeah, it's probably just a port of the PC version anyway, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, there is a PC version of GTA 5, right? Probably. So, um, but yeah. Do you think, since we're getting an, like, wink, wink, enhanced version, do you yeah. think this means that uh, we'll be getting new single player DLC? No. They're, yeah. they're all at the online. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, this game's re release and the success of GTA 5 online has pushed back GTA 6 at least a year, maybe oh, yeah. even two. Yeah, probably um, two at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, you're, I mean, you're talking. I don't know. Probably twenty twenty three at this point. So they want this one to roll out and get them a year's worth of, you know, GTA five, PS five online. Um, Do you yeah. really think GTA six is going to come out during the PS five Xbox Series X generation? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, well, everyone has to stop. Everyone has to stop playing online. Yeah. Uh. Just stop playing online and don't buy this. Don't buy GTA 5 on the PS5 or Xbox. <sighs> don't play it online. Everyone just stops. They'll go, oh, shit. We're yeah. not making any money. Yeah. Quick, release GTA 6. Release 6, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, yeah. they've, got, they've got no reason to. Yeah. It's the same thing like people say, oh, like, when's, when's Halo 3? Oh, Halo Christ. When's Half-Life <laughs> 3 coming out? Yeah. It, never. <laughs> because Steam doesn't need to. Right. Right. Steam's yeah. got more money than God. Like we, they don't need to make games anymore. They don't need to give you what you want. You, yeah. you already they've already made the money. It's like what's the point? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Valve, brother. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, until things start dropping off, there's no need to. So yeah, don't buy this. Don't buy it for Christ's sake. It's a like we said, like an eight year old game. It's been it's done. It's amazing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, like oh, I was yeah. saying at the beginning here, you know, you got a lot of kids out there that have never played any of the GTAs before, and that's what they're banking on. They're banking on kids that are getting a PS5 for the holidays. I mean, they're going to buy maybe. GTA for them or whatever, you know? So Yeah, you know. maybe, maybe. But I think anyone who wants to play it has already played it on the PS4. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Well, if, unless your first console ever is a yeah. PS5, yeah. at which point, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, life sucks for you. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless it's your, unless it's the situation, literally your your first machine is a PS Five or Xbox, whatever. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's your only choice. But everyone else, ninety nine point nine percent, will have already played this on something. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, so I, I'd be sorry. I was saying it'd be nice if they threw in a little something extra, a little something. Um, yeah. Like a new a new coloured car. <laughs> Yeah, but um, well, they'll probably just yeah. dump a lot of cash into the, the into the game as well. So. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So yeah. Okay, next up, uh, Jeff Keighley. Once again, Ooh. he's doing a Summer Games Fest, yeah. and it will start on June tenth. One event with a, the event called Kickoff Live. Uh, it's going to have more than a dozen world premieres and announcements. Uh, it will begin at two p.m. Eastern time. It will be, uh, which will be hosted by Jeff Keeley, of course. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Dan, what do you think? I mean, uh, if there's going to be so many, like, uh, world premieres and announcements, why even have a uh, E3 digital showcases then? I don't know. What I, do I, 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 it's, it does seem, it's, it's all becoming a bit fractured, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, famously E3 was the one. Everyone went there to tell about the new games, and then people kind of started breaking off. Like so, this year particularly, but you know, prior to this year, we've had people like break off and go. Now we're going to do our own thing. Like Nintendo would never really into E3. Always had their own like Space World, and do their own thing, and then later on their directs and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, it just seems it's all getting a bit fractured. Um, yeah, I look at it. I look at it as this could be spoiling the digital events the next couple of days later i mean for xbox and uh, whatever may what nintendo might be having maybe because you know if you have so many world premieres you know they're probably going to be showing some of these world premieres at those digital events too so it could be just yeah. like spoilers you know yeah i don't know but uh so but looking at this looking at the summer game fest yeah so this is a week after E3, right? Because E3 is on June 5th? No, E3 oh. is uh, June 12th through is the it? 15th. So it's two days before E3. Oh, shoot. So wait, yeah, it's it's a two days before and it's concurrent. It's running at the same time as yes. the E3, which yeah. is bonkers. Yeah. Absolutely bonkers. Yeah, this is weird. Why bother? Yeah. So on why June 10th. A, why, yeah. Why have a preview event at the same time as the world's biggest preview event? Yeah, well, yeah, the 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 E three like Microsoft and uh, Nintendo, they're going to be going on either the twelfth or the thirteenth, I think it is. And so this event for Jeff Keighley's right. on the tenth. So yeah, that is weird. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's like <laughs> all these world premieres. It's like you know, <laughs> you might be spoiling some of the world premieres that might be shown on the you know on the other event stages. But uh, one one point about this uh, show though that jeff keely's doing sony's got stuff that's going to be shown there so that's uh, going to yeah. be interesting so you might see a lot of sony stuff because you know jeff keely he's he's got a relationship with sony and uh, with yeah. you know like kojima you know and so uh -huh. yeah i think we're probably going to be seeing some stuff from sony and sony also is going to probably be doing some kind of event just before e3 because right. you know they're not going to be a, doing any digital event during e3 okay. so okay yeah oh uh, all right uh yeah blimey yeah uh, yeah this is absolutely crazy so uh, again it's that thing like well why why are we bundling all these things at the same time of the year yeah yeah i'm like yeah this is strange this is very strange yeah, you think uh just just before you go on dan it says publishers yeah. confirmed to be participating <laughs> in summer game fest include 2k activision blizzard capcom epic games sony playstation riot games square enix ubisoft and xbox yeah of course um, but and they're all oh, well sony aside they're all appearing at e3 as well so exactly yeah <laughs> weirdness yeah. yeah and i think i don't know well like looking at the um the event schedule for summer game fest yeah. There's no dedicated Sony one. There's only U Ubisoft, uh, Steam, and EA, yeah. which is how they're going to show their PlayStation stuff, I suppose. They'll show yeah. this. Oh, this game's going on PlayStation. Yeah, like third party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, weird. Yeah. Weird. And I don't know what I don't know what this is. They're saying like it's probably going to be like two hours long, too. In yeah, that'll do. Yeah. That'll do. Oh. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, we've got a, in the current shitty global situation, um, yeah, you've got to make compromises, but this is, this is, this is weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think Jeff Keighley, he just, he wants to be on top of it all. I mean, and, uh, you know, know, he yeah, does a great just... game awards show at the end of the year. And I guess, uh, you know, to do this right before the, uh, digital events at E3, I mean, he, he wants to jump on that. So, yeah. I mean, this good this on him. Like, well, for that, you know, but. well, I don't know, this just seems like, I mean, this is something that Amazon's put together, right? It looks like, and they've hired him. I'm not sure. Is this, is this his idea? Did he come up with the idea of, or is he just being paid to be the? I'm not piece? sure. I, I just know the Game Awards at the end of the year. That that is Jeff That's Keely's his. baby. Yeah, That's yeah. his. Yeah, but uh, yeah, play. But uh, I'm sure he had a lot to do with uh, putting it all together too, though. So yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he had lots of input. But yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I won't be watching because I, I couldn't care less about the next generation. But I'm sure it's going to be great. Yeah. Um. There's no, you know, Metroid Four exclusive hour-long presentation so i don't care yeah well uh, everything, <laughs> everything else can uh shove it well anyway i hope all of you listeners out there in, in a couple of weeks we're doing our e3 predictions episode so uh oh, i hope God. you uh you know uh tune in to listen to dan give his predictions on some kind of retro things that are going to be coming oh out. my goodness look out for that kids <laughs> Well, anyway, speaking of E3, let's get on to our topic of the show. So uh, jumping into the topic of the show, so our memories of E3. And uh, I just want to read a couple of comments. We have, uh, of course, uh, our uh, friend of the show and uh, uh, patron, uh, Burlyman Gaming. He wrote Whee! in about uh, his E3 memory. He said, I would say E3 2016 uh, was one of his favorites because we got the lineup from Sony of Death Stranding, Spider-Man, Horizon mm -hmm. Zero Dawn, God of War. And we also got the Scalebound trailer. Dan, do you remember Scalebound? That was that I game that was supposed Scalebound. to come out for Xbox. Yeah, that's it, gutting. That's got an interesting story. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's weird. And uh, he also says uh, also Resident Evil Seven was uh, shown off, and uh, many other great games too. Uh, and uh, Silent Hill dude, I uh, said one of his uh, greatest memories of E3 was the uh, announcement of Halo Two. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, but anyway, what I want to do, uh, just to start off my memory, so 1995, Dan, that was the year before I came to Japan. I came to Japan in 1996, yeah. and of course, 1995 was the very first E3, and um, you know, the there's a really good book out, and it was made into a like a movie, I think it was, but the book uh, called Console Wars about uh, uh, Sega and uh nintendo by blake j harris i mean if you haven't read that book i really really recommend it it's a great book and uh it goes into detail about the war between uh you know nintendo and sega especially here in or in america actually uh but also on the japan side as well but uh what's funny about e3 was you know when it started you know there was this uh thing about ces you know the consumer yeah. electronics show and it's like whether or not you know, uh, the uh, pre presentations and the booths would be at CES or not. And, uh, mm. you know, they were able to uh, come to an agreement to uh, to put the uh, the convention in L.A. And uh, uh, what was interesting about that was uh, one of the people responsible for that. Uh, I think his name was Pat Farrell. I think it was. Um, he was able to book uh, the L.A. Convention Center because the Japanese companies like, you know, the the top heads of sega and sony and everything they they would only have to make one flight into la whereas the the mm. ces you know they would have to have a connecting flight to las vegas mm. um but anyway uh my memory of that show i mean i heard about it in the news and all of course i wasn't there but uh you know uh nintendo they they were supposed to show the uh, nintendo 64 but at that time it was still called the ultra 64 right dan yeah it was yeah Maybe even Project Reality. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, what was it? The uh, what, what was the other? The not the. Dr I'm trying to remember what it was. The the handheld that they showed there as well. Uh, um. Anyway, they had one particular handheld, and then Donkey Kong Country Two. I think that was one of the big games that the Nintendo oh, yeah. showed off. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, the big part of the show that I'll always remember was you know Sony. And Nintendo, they had a falling out. And uh, the very first PlayStation, of course, they were showing off the, the CD-ROM technology. And a guy named Olufsen, 
uh, Olafur Olafsson. He comes on stage and he talks about, you know, the 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 CD-ROM technology and all. And then he then he brings Steve Race on the stage, and Steve Race was the man responsible for launching the PlayStation in the, in the U.S. And before so- uh, Sony had come on stage, you know, uh, Tom Kalinske of Sega had been on stage and uh, he was very apprehensive about, you know, introducing the Saturn and all because the Saturn pretty much wasn't ready at that time, didn't have enough games for it. And the price point was three ninety nine. Well, Steve Race comes on stage and just says two ninety nine for the PlayStation. Leaves the stage and just jaw dropping you know (laughs) so what a way to enter the console market by just yeah a hundred dollars uh cheaper than your biggest competitor was sega so yeah that was a that was a great moment i think uh you know and that defined a dinner a generation right there that basically launched the playstation and uh that was the beginning of the end for sega um yeah and then uh of course uh in recent history, of course, uh, on the Xbox stage a couple of years ago, what was it? Keanu Reeves came out on stage for uh, Cyberpunk. Oh boy! If yeah, just yeah, think if yeah. Keanu Reeves would have known what uh, what problems Cyberpunk would have been having now, I wonder if he would have still went out on stage for Microsoft at that time. <laughs> but yeah, I know, Dan. Yeah, so how about for you, man? Uh, what are some memories of uh, E3? uh mostly nintendo ones um so it would have been uh the the, the announcement the ds okay yeah. um that was pretty cool mm-hmm. uh and of course uh yeah the wii yeah it was oh, big, the... big 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 reveals that's yeah. what i was gonna say the virtual boy that's the one yeah i was thinking about. oh yeah 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 the yeah boy. so um yeah. yeah no yeah the announcement the, the ds was very cool Mm-hmm. Reggie, uh, I remember Reggie walking out on sca- or walking out on stage, having a good rummage mm-hmm. in his uh, inner suit pocket, <laughs> and uh, yeah, whipping out a, a DS, mm-hmm. and us all going ooh, nah. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, it turned out to be obviously freaking amazing, yeah, um, one of the best selling handhelds of all time, yeah, and uh, I don't remember Sony coming up with the PSP I and mean, everyone going ooh, it's not yeah. as good as a DS. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wasn't and the, of course, wasn't the Vita course. Vita also announced at E3? Oh, invariably, absolutely. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. It would have been uh, 2011 or so, and yeah. then you know, around 2012. So yeah, it would have been hyped up. Yeah. Um, I remember the 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 announcement of the Wii being absolutely freaking. You know, well, not the yeah the pre- the Wii presentation at E3 being absolutely freaking monumental. Yeah. Um, mm. that was very very cool indeed. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. kind of defined I mean, a generation right there. The Wii, yeah, yeah it really definitely. did. It yeah. did, and uh, you know, it it, it 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 spoke of a lot of possibilities. I mean, mostly none of them came true. Yeah, um, the potential of the Wii was never even we never even come close to that. It just became a shovelware ship machine for uh, generic motion games. But the, the the ideas and the ideas presented in that, uh, like the trailer and and the the hype and the scope of the Wii was freaking amazing yeah um that the suggestions they made in like their their promo work was freaking brilliant but it just yeah. never never really came to anything which is unfortunate yeah because it could have been it, it i mean it's it, it it's popular and it's famous because it just sold in ridiculous numbers and right. despite being a colossally underpowered machine um you know it, it sold because of its gimmick and just because of wii sports yeah and you know so in some ways you can you can kind of view the Wii as uh, maybe a bit of a, a failure. I mean, in terms of sales, obviously not, but in terms of like attach rate, I think the attach rate's quite low. So a lot of people did just buy it to play Wii Sports and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh man! But things like you know the the, the online twenty four seven and like oh we're going to send you games in your sleep. You yeah. wake up to DLC yeah. and none of this shit happened. Yeah. Um, you know, and like the the ideas, the possibilities with gesture controls, it all just became I'll oh, swing your remote to attack. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a it's a real shame. It's a real shame. Nothing really, you know. There's some good things, but fundamentally, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. It never really made its full potential. I don't think. Yeah, going back to that first E3, I have a question for you. If yeah. if Sega would have held off on the on the Saturn for a while longer. I yeah. think that would have been more successful against the Absolutely. PlayStation One. Yeah, they they should have shit canned the Saturn outright, and um, 
Because yeah. well, 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 ultimately, what happened was they they built a, another really good two D console, and uh, everyone's like, "No, no, we're going three D." And they went, "Oh shit!" So the last minute, they they threw a three D. I said you threw a three D card in there. So you got two sets of processes kind of not agreeing, but you you you've got to you got to compensate for having two different uh, systems essentially. Right. So it was a real pain in the ass to program for. If they'd gone right, we're going to shit can this. Yeah. Um. You know, let let. Well, actually, it would have been too late because if if the, the PlayStation coming out was dead, was game over anyway. Yeah, or, I mean, all all Sony, uh, all Sega could done was mitigate that. Yeah. Um, if they'd had the Dreamcast, if they'd shit canned the Saturn and had the Dreamcast come out, yeah. at that point, yeah, they might have stood a chance. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, yeah, um, yeah, it was it was an awkward time in games. The yeah. shift from two D to three D, mm-hmm. and I don't know, maybe if they'd stuck with a two D machine and. Uh, that would have only prolonged it yeah um but maybe if it had just been a 2d machine and they just made a load of a really great 2d games like two, um i don't know relied on their like arcade heritage and stuff they probably would have done quite well and it probably would have kept them going long enough to get a good solid foundation for the dreamcast right i mean because the damage done by the saturn impaired what happened to the dreamcast yeah like that carried forward i mean in many ways you, you could look at it as the dreamcast was doomed before it even came out because of yeah. what happened with the saturn yeah um which is a shame. Friggin' the Dreamcast lasted about 18 months. Yeah. It's like, what the, <laughs> f- what the F? Yeah. And, uh, I, I, you know, the Dreamcast is so good. It was yeah. so ahead of its fucking time. It's yeah. such an amazing machine. Yeah. And uh, even, I mean, yeah, say you got cold feet and it's like, oh, we'll sod it. We'll, we'll quit. We're just going to be devs only now or publishers only now yeah well the japanese side was just as stubborn as hell to well no they 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 were they was they were self-sabotaging yeah they they were they just wanted they was punching holes in their own boat yeah um as much as they could um really depressing they should have just they they should have just let sega of america run run with things they really should they really should have gone right you guys are absolutely kicking ass yep um yeah, uh, yeah uh, that, that Sega of America made it a global film because that, that petered over into here, that petered over to Europe. Yeah. You know, that that success carried over. Like, we heard about the big things that were happening with Sega in the States and it, and it, it, it boosted hype over here. Yeah. And like Sega of Europe uh, piggybacked off that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't really say now. But um, yeah, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been amazing. Yeah. But no, and uh, sorry, yeah, Nintendo of America also is, is partly to blame because their insistence on keeping the Mega Drive going as long as bloody possible. Because mm-hmm. they, they would have had that friggin' going up until 98, 99. Yeah. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't want the Saturn full stop. They were like, well, they've still got legs in this. Let's just keep bringing add ons for it, even though the 32X had failed, even though the Mega CD was a good idea in practice, fundamentally also had failed. Yeah. You know, uh, they kept just trying to bring life into the Mega Drive. So if it had been like a Mega Drive kind of like a, like a two like mm-hmm. a mega drive no an actual mega drive two not just the mega drive two is in the hardware revision but natural mega drive two yeah um that might have been quite good to keep it going yeah um but yeah no i mean they're, they're both yeah they're both struggling at that point yeah. they've had their massive success and you know knocking nintendo off the hot spot yeah top spot um yeah but yeah, uh, it took a yeah, whole they, generation to do that too. <laughs> well, it, yeah, but even that, that, that's, that is a, an absolute work of art. It's like someone tomorrow coming out with a friggin' operating system. Yeah. And a year and a half from now having 50, 50 split with Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it wouldn't it's happen. Amazing. Yeah. yeah it's, it is amazing. Um, yeah. but yeah, they're both to blame. Uh, you know, not as much. So yeah, Sega Japan really wanted to destroy themselves yeah. uh, as soon as possible. And in that I first, mean, they were, oh, go go ahead, Dan, go ahead. No, I mean, and they were right because like it's, it's like Nolan Bushnell said about the Atari, like yeah. you have to obsolete your own material or or someone else will. Right, you've got to make your own machines obsolete before someone else does. Yeah, and so they they, they were like piggybacking off that. That makes sense. You you your Mega Drive, um, you know, at ninety five, that's like ninety four. Well, it came out in eighty eight in Japan, so it's like it's ancient history at this point. Yeah, you know, ninety four, ninety five. They're talking about the Saturn and stuff. It's like we want to get rid of it, and like yeah. Sega of America's like, well, you know, we can keep it going a bit, little bit longer, yeah. And that would have bought them more time to fix the Saturn properly and actually have a real dedicated 3D machine and not just a, a 2.5D machine, right? Um, Speaking that, yeah. of things that have been around for a long time now, the uh, during that first E3, Nintendo's uh, keynote speech was all about software piracy, the evils of software piracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably was. 
But they've always had it. I mean, they've got off pretty light historically. I mean, yeah. you know, having carts and stuff back in the day, that wasn't easy. Yeah. You, you, you know, po- you know, copying a cart, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like now um, yeah. where you can just get a cart, get a cart made of whatever you want ever for, pe- for literally pennies. Yeah. You can get anything made into a cart. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the poor bastards on floppy disk and CD. You got you got to send yeah. your heart out to because they got absolutely humped. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's one of the things that killed the Dreamcast. One of the things that killed the Dreamcast was uh, Sega's really crap anti piracy measures. Yeah, like you could just burn a CD in. and in the in the very first revision, the 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 zero model hardware model of the Dreamcast, you can just burn CDs. Right, just <laughs> burn a CD, put in your Dreamcast, buff, you're away, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of they kind of tweaked it in in the zero uh, in the one hardware revision, but again, if you've got like an action replay ta- uh, disc, mm-hmm. like, like a cheat disc, yeah. that just bypassed it all. Yeah. So you pop your action replay disc in, you take it out, and you put your burnt CD in, and no worries. Mm-hmm. And one of the things in the UK, uh, the um, uh, an action replay CD came on the front of a magazine. Oh. Mm-hmm. So for the cost of a magazine, you got a demo version of the action replay, which allowed you to play pirate games and yeah. imported games. Yeah. So I mean, there's so much that you know. There, a lot of piracy did really, really kill off the the Dreamcast. Uh, those were the days, Dan. All those gaming magazines that had the CD ROMs on, you know. Oh yeah. In, the, in them, you know, like uh, Electronic Games magazine and all that. Yeah. Good it's very times. sad the, the state of um. Yeah, that's something I'm, I'm talking. About. I'm still making a video about it, but um, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, I mean, particularly here in the UK, are we are we are, I've said it before. Like, we had a, a magazine for everything. Yeah. If you go to like um, Wikipedia, and uh, you, t- you type in like gaming magazines, gaming publications, yeah, and you can sort you know by alphabet, you can sort by country. Have a look at the freaking UK uh, gaming magazines. Mm-hmm. It's it's enormous. It's yeah, absolutely massive. And now in the UK, I think we have four. Yeah, it's been um, for years. It's been shrinking. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it's a shame because um, you know that. Uh, yeah, but I guess you don't need it. You got Twitch, you got YouTube, you have got all that stuff. But it's just not right. as fun. Right, right. Yeah, and it's fun. Yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. So that was our uh, topic of the show. So that kind of mixed in with our retro topic of the week this week as well. So yeah. <laughs> That'll be quite however. And because I've been just too busy with work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so- yeah, just just a, a a quick note to all of our listeners. Uh, this week uh, we're not going to be doing a post show, and then our uh, next episode is going to be on June fifth, which is the big E three predictions episode. So I uh, hope you'll stay tuned for that. It's going to be a big one. Yeah, it's going to be another roundtable discussion episode. So uh, yeah. hope you all look forward to that. So moving on, uh, our new and upcoming video game releases for the week of May twenty fourth through the thirtieth. Oh. Eight games, Dan. It's starting Eight to get whole games. Yep. Every week now through E3, it's going to be expanding. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. First game on the list: Bio Mutant. Bio Mutant oh, comes yeah. out on May twenty fifth for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This is really interesting. There is no next gen version of this yet. Uh, probably no, later I, we'll be yeah, getting a next absolutely version. But uh, anyway. Biomutant is an open world post apocalyptic kung fu fable RPG with a unique martial art martial art style combat system allowing you to mix melee shooting and mutant ability action. So role playing action RPG comes out on the twenty fifth. Uh, Dan, did you hear? Uh, was it Conan O'Brien? He actually oh, yeah. played a demo of this game and he didn't like it so much. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but he's he's not much of it. I mean, he has that thing where he 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 he's he ignorantly plays games on his show, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was his thing. Like, he played games and like had to have people like hold his hand and walk him through it. So yeah. probably doesn't mean a great deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. So I want to play this. But uh, it's yeah. it's been in development for a very long time. This yes. is another game that announced a very long time ago. Yeah. Well, it's like THQ Nordic was saying that uh, they have a small, actually a small team working on this game, and they've been working yeah. on it for years. So, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Next up on the list, uh, coming to the Nintendo Switch, Man Eater. So, I don't know if mm-hmm. you heard about this one. So, it's kind of like uh, destroy all humans in the sense that you're a shark and you're destroying and killing, uh, well, destroying boats and killing humans in the boat. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Uh, it, uh, 
comes out on the 25th for uh, PlayStation 4, PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. It's already out there, but it's coming to the yeah. Nintendo Switch, I should say. So anyway, hey. yeah, Man Eater is a single player action RPG set in the unforgiving waters of the Gulf Coast. Fight to survive in the open ocean with danger lurking at every depth. Your only tools are your wits, your jaws, and an uncanny ability to evolve as you feed. Anything and everything is on the menu. <laughs> so, coming to the Nintendo Switch, but actually, this is now out on uh, Xbox Game Pass. So, mm. I would, uh, I don't know, if, you have a, if you're only a Switch uh, holder or, or user, uh, I would give it a try, but uh, if you also have Xbox... And if you have Game Pass, I'd give it a try on that. So uh, mm. it's probably going to look better on Xbox also. So. I watched, yeah, I watched Burley play. It looked all right. Uh -huh. um, Burley was playing yeah. Anteater, huh? Ages ago. Yeah. Ages and ages. When it first came out, I think. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't on PS5. I think it was played on PS4, maybe. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it, looks, it, looks, it looks like the, the Jaws game that came out from Appaloosa Studios on the PS2 back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Next up on the list, Saints Row, the third remastered for coming Christ out on May 25th yeah, for next-gen consoles for PS5 and Xbox Series X. That is the best one, though. Oh, really? You think so? Saints Row, the third is excellent. Yeah, it's a yeah. good game. Very good game. Experience a full package remastered. Steelport, the original uh, City of Sin, has never looked so good as it drowns in sex, drugs, and guns. The Third Street's uh, Saints are at the height of power and yours to control. So coming out on the 25th. Um, yeah. yeah. Looks like something I'll probably uh, try to play. It's, yeah, It's very good. Yeah. Uh, are we allowed to talk about things now? Or do I talk about things at the end? Oh, if you want to talk about them now, that's fine. <laughs> No, because it, yeah, it's, it is good. It, it's it. So it's the original. The first Saints Row started out as like a a, a serious contender to GTA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But like, from from two onwards, it felt like crazy parody. And like this one, this one's the, probably the the best example of that because Saints Row Four. That's the latest a one, bit, right? Yeah. Four. Yeah, that gets a little that gets a little bit too silly. Yeah. But this one rides a line. It's quite a good parody of like open world games and like the GTA series. And you know, uh, this is yeah, this is the best one. This is great. Yeah. Uh, I like this. Well, Saints uh, Row Four is like they're in the White House and stuff, right? I think it's it bomb. Yeah. It's a, it's a little yeah. too far. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. great. I mean, Four gets bonus points for having Hadaway on the soundtrack, which is good. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, what is love? That's excellent. Um, cool. But yeah, no, yeah, it's good. It's good. Cool. I'll probably pick this up when it's like a tenner. Yeah, but uh, this is another thing. Like, how many times has this been released now? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow, really? It's getting like in GTA 5 territory, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not far off. Yeah. All right. But, next yeah, up well. on the list, Shin Migami, uh, oh. or I'm sorry, Shin Megami uh, uh -huh. Tensei the Third Nocturne comes out on May 25th for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Okay. Have you ever played this one, Dan? Uh, no, Shin I not, Megami no. uh, Tensei, huh? No. Oh, reawaken your inner demon in a modernized version of the acclaimed Atlas classic. Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. What begins as a normal day in Tokyo turns out to be everything but when the conception, an, an ethereal apocalypse, is invoked. Mm. So, role playing Japanese style RPG. Yeah. So, yeah. published by, uh, you know, uh, Atlas. Yeah. So, should be good. Should be massive good. series, yeah, massive, yeah, massive, definitely massive series. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of a massive series, another one on the list. Next up, Earth Defense Force World Brothers. So you've heard of Earth oh. Defense Force, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was playing it uh, the other week. Yeah. For uh, PS4, Nintendo Switch, yeah, and okay. PC. Yeah. Yeah. A new battlefield appears in the EDF Earth Defense Force series. This time, the world becomes the Square Earth. The name of this game is Earth Defense Force World Brothers. This game takes place in a 3D voxel world, which everything is made of square pieces. So it kind of, if you oh. look at it, it kind of looks like uh, Earth Defense Force meets Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft Defense Force. Yeah. So it comes out on the 27th. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. 
So yeah, very Minecraft in uh, style. Next up on the list, Song of Horror. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Fear the Presence for PS4 and Xbox One on May 28th. So it's coming to console. So it's a it was out on PC. Beware the shadows in the darkness, which seem silent. Beware the closed doors, the whispering mirrors. Beware the song of horror that nests in the cracks of your mind. So yes, uh, action, adventure, survival, horror uh, comes out. Yeah, on the twenty eighth. Yeah. Okay, next what? up on the list, <laughs> Wonder Boy Asha in Monsters World comes out on Yay. May twenty eighth for PS four, Nintendo Switch, and PC. You played this one, Dan? No. <laughs> isn't this just a, no? Isn't this a reskin of three though? It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Wonder Boy Asha in Monster World becomes a real Wonder Boy adventure that stays true to its roots as the latest part of the legendary and successful series that dates back to 1986. So, I've played I've played all the Wonder Boy games, but yeah, but not not obviously this one because this is, this is this is new. Yeah, it's action platformer 2D. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No online multiplayer. So, yeah. Also on PC and Switch. So on May 28th comes out hmm, and good. finally I mean... finally on the list world's end club comes out on oh. may 28th for the switch so platformer adventure so renowned game writers uh uchikoshi kotaru and kodaka kazutaka return with a brand new mm-hmm. game that's easy to dive into and full of twists and turns this charming and vivid story of friendship and mystery will captivate new and experienced players alike Hmm. So it comes out on the 28th and it's also on iPhone and iPad as well. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So Dan, what's your pick of the week, man? Uh, uh for me, it's uh definitely bio mutant. Uh, second would okay. be probably cause I've never played man eater yet. I haven't played that no. yet. So, uh, maybe on uh game pass, I might give that a try. What about you? Uh, it would definitely be, uh, Asher in Wonderland, mm-hmm. Wonder Boy four. Uh huh. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I'm looking at it now. Actually, it's it's very interesting. Um, yeah, I played the uh, Wonder Boy uh, three, the Dragon's Trap remake they made not so long ago, which is really really good. So um, yeah, I'm liking this. This is interesting. Cool. Yeah, I I'm, in fact I'm going to put it right now live on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff, man. Yeah. Okay, so. Before we conclude the episode, I want to let everyone know where you can find me on social media. You can find my YouTube channel for gaming content at youtube.com slash expat2020gaming and at expat2020.live. My other social media links to Twitter, Instagram, the Arena Podcast Discord server, and the podcast website are at Linktree. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash expat2020. I'm also a live streamer and a Twitch affiliate on twitch.tv slash expat2020. And I do occasional gaming and special event live streams for the podcast, as well as a supplement to the show called The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news week and review live stream, which streams on Fridays on a time-permitting basis. That does it for me. How about you, Dan? Where can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitch. My Twitch handle is press start to game. That's just mm-hmm. one giant long word. Press start to game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stream a couple times a week, maybe if I can be asked. Mm-hmm. I also have a YouTube channel, which is pretty much just copies of what I did on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, but also got some original content. I know I've been setting up about a month and a half now, but, but I'm working on a project and it's just so involved. I didn't realize at the time it's going to be this complicated. Yeah. Um, so hopefully by 2025, I'll have a new video of original content on my uh, YouTube channel. But, yep. Yeah. And that's also you press start to game. Right. Uh, you can find all this information at our website. Yes. Yes. And like yeah. I was saying earlier, yeah, uh, our next episode will be on June 5th. That will be our uh, E3 predictions episode. And we're going to be doing uh, stuff for E3. So we're yep. going to be busy preparing for E3. Uh, so I hope you can, uh, stay tuned and, uh, listen to us for those. Yeah. So, uh, Dan, it's time for the Indie Recording Artist Spotlight to finish the show. So this week's Yay! spotlight, this week's spotlight is on Maya Isaac, who is based in New York Damn. City and has garnered substantial acclaim from critics and music connoisseurs alike from the title song of her album called Higher Than Fever. 
Mm. This has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 39. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Dan. We hope to catch you on June 5th for our E3 hey. predictions episode. So take care, everyone. Peace out. Bye. Talking a lot and we both are running weak Trying to keep this all from falling back Letting life grow, trying to let go And I know for a fact I love you Bigger than the sea I love you better than my coffee in the morning. I love you wider than a river, bigger than the sea, larger than the sky, higher than fever. Lately, we Losing ourselves, are we? Larger than the sky, higher than fever